Well, here we are again, Be a Refuge, and we have some more friends from our refuge community joining us today, and Kathy's going to introduce them. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy to be having this conversation about art and beauty at the refuge with Amy Jo Nova and Don Hyken, and uh, just the power of art in community that has been created really since day one. And I just wanna say this as we start, is that a huge piece of the story, even us gathering today, when I mean, we gather with joy to talk about this thing that we love. And then we also gather with sadness and grief because the person who really brought this um, like expansive and deep thing to the refuge, Jenny Herrick, who was part of the refuge from the very beginning and was our contemplative arts pastor and coordinator and, you know, just the nurturer and cultivator and curator of beauty at the refuge, um, died last year, suddenly complications from surgery in February of 2022. And um, she, she left this legacy and all four of us were formed by her in different ways. And so Dawn was here from the beginning of the refuge, really, or, you know, from the very beginning. And then Amy Jo, I can't remember exactly when you enter the story. You can share that. Um, but I, the part is, is that what we're all with is um, how in formation and community, beauty saved us. Mm -hmm. It really saved us. And Jenny... Um, brought that to us like it gives me chills when I say it because she just this was what she um, her gift in the world and that we got to be recipients of that so I'm glad we can talk today we're so happy to just be hanging out with our friends and so you know I don't know however you want to start I think the best part is just to maybe say you know where you entered into the refuge and like where where art was for you, like, where was this, what, what, what did beauty do? And, you know, that was just like the launching part. And then we can just see where the conversation goes. Okay. Do you want me to start? <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. Actually, really quick, I didn't plan this, but I'm going to light a candle because I oh. feel like Jenny would appreciate it. I already have. Oh, you oh, are look at this on. on it. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Yeah. So. No. Do you know why? Because it is something uh, uh, about uh, Jenny, about intentionally making spaces into something that just helps to feel connected. And uh, candles definitely do that. So, mm -hmm. um, and I think, I think, in terms of for my entering in, it was definitely pretty much at the beginning. Um, for sure, I, you know, uh, I met Jenny kind of there uh, when she started entering in too. And from that point, uh, look, kind of getting to know her and realizing how much she made space for people. And I, I do love making spaces in my own way um, of that. And so we definitely started connecting that way. And um, she just made spaces that I think gave people just a chance to have new perspectives, to experience beauty, have community, and help us understand that we, each of us, have a unique beauty and a gift to share with the community and beyond. And it, it truly was inspiring that way. And like you said, the refuge that is right now, truly because we were able to do things with it, has Jenny's artistry and vision evident in all visual parts throughout the whole mm -hmm. refuge. I mean, it's her graphics that she did with wording. It's her, some of her different photos, you know, graffiti photos and other artwork. And then also, you know, kind of the center, the kind of feng shui, the way things kind of move around in the refuge was something that she just used as much as possible to make things be a welcoming, you know, center for our community. And so from the beginning of our friendship, I think I, you know, we worked on the spaces, we worked on stations uh, for different um, events. And she loved collaborating with people 
also at that point. Oops, I lost my ear thing. But collaborating with people and um, she, you know, would like, let's say for Advent or Lent or Easter or 12, the Stations of the Cross or Refuge Dinners or whatever it was, she was always reaching out who would like to help and make something that would be making it much more meaningful. And that's became, you know, stations and ways of connecting with people. And she always encouraged, you know, the people that myself and others that were working on those stations, she kind of give us prompts in a way like a common theme, but from that point, take it away, you know, and you could do your own thing. And she was always encouraging about it and, and uh, helping realize that we could present our part in the way, you know, we kind of wanted it all, always seemed like it came out in a beautiful way. Um, but one of the things I thought in the activities and the, and the workshops that she would organize always kind of circled around meditative meditation and contemplation type things. And I remember she gave me anyway, I know she gave a few others also a lifelong love of labyrinths. I mean, she loved labyrinths that was incorporated into some of her different things along with the labyrinth that she brought that we could actually use inside. And, you know, I uh, make a make an effort to find labyrinths, you know, if I can when I'm traveling and <laughs> go walk a labyrinth. I found one in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, she also like, she had a lot of different friends that also had some of that same kind of thoughts and contemplative um, spirituality. And one of them was Christine Sign. And she had organized a workshop bringing her here. And I remember the big thing, the takeaway there was um, gardening and spirituality and how nature has its seasons and so does our soul. And that it truly is just like nature, our souls have different seasons that they go through and follow along. And if we allow ourselves to relax into that, uh, it, it feels right. And I think the only other thing I, ca I can think of that shows community and, and, and her imprint on it for the refuge, because it's continuing, is Beauty Night. And Beauty Night is just a way of giving others a space again and something to share that they've created in any way, storytelling, music, um, yes. poetry, you know, um, whatever they've done in painting. I mean, just any kind of thing that's come out of them that they feel like it's a, a space to show it and share it. And the moment you do, I think uh, it's amazing night of community. Mm. I, I mean, it's amazing to see people and do what they've done or what they're doing and everything but I think for the person doing it it's also something that just it changes you all of a sudden you've got a voice and you're letting it be heard and it is heard I think it's a gift you know that uh, I'm I'm so grateful to be able to have so that's kind of my beginnings with Jenny so love it that's awesome you and Joe well, I came to the refuge in 2014, I believe, um, just off of the street because my therapist said, oh, you live in yes. Broomfield. You should go visit the refuge because I was going through some major, major issues. <laughs> um, I was crumbling internally because I was wondering you know is it true that I'm gay is it okay with God is it I was wrestling with really big identity issues and um and therefore a lot of shifting in my uh viewpoints surrounding God um and I needed that kind of support and my therapist was like, hey, you should go to the refuge. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> I just walked right in there and I said, Kathy Escobar, who is Kathy Escobar? I'm supposed <laughs> to talk to Kathy Escobar. <laughs> I remember that night. I do. And I'm so grateful for it. It was awesome. It was fun. Um, I got a little tour of what you guys were about and, and, then pretty soon I never wanted to ever leave the refuge. I was like, 
if the chores are unlocked, I really want to be there. <laughs> um, you guys became my family. You really stuck with me. And, and I think my first, I was trying to think, how did, how did Kathy find out that I was an artist? <laughs> And I think it's because of Refuge Cafe. I just sat down and I was dueling one time. Ah. Do you remember that? Yeah. And you're like, wow, I want to, I want to doodle like for, for us all to color. And so, and then we started making, I made lots of them, lots of little coloring pages in the Refuge Cafe. I have those originals still, by the way, Mike said you wondered where they were. Yes, we need them. I mean, <laughs> they were so beautiful and we handed yeah, them out to people were. all the time and people would just doodle at the refuge. And I forgot about that. I forgot about that as the beginning of yep, you creating art at the refuge. The beginning. And then I've worked with, I worked with Jenny a little bit. I feel like I did not get to know her as well as you guys. And I feel really jelly. <laughs> um, my experiences with her though were always I, I did always walk away in more love with beauty and um, and art, which is the thing that I am good at. And I wouldn't even say good at, and it's because I have done it. It's just been, it's a, it's a way of life, I think, art mm -hmm. for me. And I even did a little piece by accident a couple days ago with a photograph. <laughs> You're going to laugh. It's a photograph of my feet in the bathtub and it's against this it's against um the backdrop of of tile that's meant to look like marble and i was like wow that's art it's not real it's not real marble but it's art and so then i'm like well i'm taking a picture of it and it's artistic so it's art imitating art and then i got to thinking about art imitating art imitating art imitating art and i realized you boils down to art Im imitates life no i don't think so i really think art is life mm. i think art is life mm. and for me and that was just like a little revelation i had the other day <laughs> um it's like breathing like if i didn't have art i, I don't know that i'd be here mm. really i think it's what, what would my purpose be i don't even know let's not go there <laughs> <laughs> so that's my little spiel I guess um on the importance of art and I feel like it heals people mm. that you can drag into it <laughs> like if if I'm able to engage someone with whatever art form I'm practicing at the time then we're sharing a connection and we are getting to know each other in some way and we're relating to ourselves because that stuff doesn't come out of nowhere it's not just it it's it, it's connected to your heart and mind i think and your very being and that's what comes out how can it not be beautiful mm. and even you can say that about like really dark art too because i have done my share of really dark hopeless art and that is so therapeutic and beautiful. Um, I just, all, my life is all about art and beauty. And I, I um, it's always a challenge for me to remember that and not get dragged away from it. Yeah. Well, and one of the ways we connected first, Amy Jo, is uh, through music as well, which is another art yep. form and singing yes. together and playing together and um, and, you know, as a, as a song writer, that's kind of how it's been for me too. It's something that connects me to something deeper that is shared and bigger and this connecting place to humanity and to beauty. And so I'd love to hear a little bit about like how music for you is part of that too. Cause I think, um, you know, some people think of art purely as like the, the medium of something physical on a paper or you know but like other forms of art yeah there's all kinds of you think of the arts with that s on there mm -hmm. um it is everything music dance and i i even think there's art in science um because mm -hmm. the photographers have to 
be able to capture it honestly and tweak it. And that's thinking creatively and the engineers behind all of that have to think creatively. And that is art too. It's, um, it's interesting to me how we have narrowed it down so much to it's painting. <laughs> yeah, that, that must be it. Um, but music, um, of course, you know, that's creative coming up with all the symphonies over the ages and all the way through Motown and jazz and like, oh, it's just any instrument that you can make with your hands. People made those instruments, each one of them, they invented that. Somebody just sat down and was like, oh, I like how this sounds. And then I wonder if I did this, wonder if I added this string, you know? all of these things came from somewhere and that's creativity. And then the songs and beats that you can make, it's just, how cool is it that all <laughs> of humanity is bound by that together? We, we belong to each other. Mm. I love that. It's language. It's a language. Music is a language, just like poetry, just like narratives, just like painting. Dance like dance dance like theater yes, like acting yes yeah yeah it's and all around um, yep it makes me think that um this was at one of the beauty nights um that don um highlighted and uh people uh, that are listening and might not know about some of the special events that we have i mean this is a long time thing it's been years and years and years every fall in November, we host this open night where people can share mm. and um, their art and beauty. And I remember at the beginning, Jenny and I would like have to really like um, encourage in a really significant way, like, please sign up. We need your voice. And it's, we'd love to have you. And people were nervous and, you know, these things, this is a way back when, and now we put that out and it fills up. Because it's my favorite night of the whole year. At the it's, oh my good me too it's like way up there it's, it's like I get chills when I even think about it mm -hmm. because and it's not orchestrated like it's not it's just like a place to share and listen share people share and then people listen and um interact with just soaking in beauty and she brought the um I think it's I don't know how to pronounce his name um in this moment my, my brain's not working, but the quote is beauty will save the world. Mm -hmm. And, um, beauty, that's just what I'm, as I'm listening, like it saves us. And Thomas Merton, I do know this one, you know, that art enables us to lose ourselves and find ourselves at the same time. And that this was a piece that Jenny just always really tried to remind us because our default to head is embedded in us and especially from like church systems it's like let's just get knowledge and let's just process with our mouths you know and talk and then she would be like we need pauses we need places to reflect we need places to respond we need places to create and experiential everything and, you know, just now I've just seen like that really took in us. And it's almost like every gathering has to have that in some, you know, way, shape or form. And um, I was thinking, well, I was really thinking about a night, Amy Joe, that somewhere you did a night on creative, um, it was play. It was something on like the spiritual yeah. discipline of play. And I remember you were like running around on a scooter, like we had scooters and play -Doh. Do you remember this? vaguely did we have it's a like, fort I think so and there were so many fun things and I mean that's like makes me smile because it's so fun to just be freer and you know interactive this, uh, interactive and engage and some people could look and go what are they doing like this is their <laughs> Sunday gathering <laughs> and <they're> like yes <laughs> um <laughs> But it makes me think for, um, you mentioned this, Dawn, about Art, art Lab. And then I know that, Amy Jo, you were able to do some Art Labs in there. And then just to say out loud that um, Jenny was gone for the last big chunk of years. So that makes sense that you didn't interact with her all the time because she didn't live here full time. 
for the last five or six years at least. And so um, she was in another state caring for her mother. And so the art labs, though, like those experiences for those of us that were in them were really, really special. And I'm just wondering, like, what that was like for you, Dawn, and then, you know, you too, Amy Jo, like, just having that space to, like, drop in, in a new way. Yeah, I was so excited when she announced her series of art labs. Um because, you know, it's interesting, all the spaces that I had created with her, at, you know, for other things, I still didn't really think of myself as an artist. And I felt like I didn't know, I didn't know how to use paint or, you know, other types of things. And what she did with those art labs was offer, you know, things we did make, but it was also offering her knowledge of the techniques of making them too, and helping us to understand, you know, even like, you know, uh, sculpting paste, uh, using credit cards to make paint stripes, using dripping paint, using resistant stuff, using stencils. I mean, just a ton of different ways of doing stuff, but she also then would have us kind of focus in on, on what it was for us, for us alone, nobody else would have the same one, you know, was what we were wanting to focus on in that project. But the the thing that, it, and she also was, she really, she would bring a lot of art materials, you know, Posca pens. I love Posca pens. <laughs> My budget doesn't love them, but I love Posca pens. And, you know, all sorts of types of paint, types of brushes, types of watercolor crayons, I, things that I had, I had no idea, which was exciting to me to be able to, to to just get a chance to do it but the most important was then she also was able to just open up that space so we could go and practice it for those couple hours and experiment with it and think about it and think about what we were thinking and giving us a space to process some of those inner thoughts that we had and kind of put them out there in in art form and I think um, I know that it inspired me in, uh, in terms of trying to look in my own home to try and make a space to truly keep practicing that. And I, you know, um, <laughs> I still have all of the art things I did. <laughs> um, and I believe I shared one of them maybe <laughs> at, the, at Beauty Night. Um, but it always made me excited to learn more or to experiment and to, to, to do my own work too, to find out how do I express myself through all this other stuff. So anyway, I think that's kind of art lab. Mm, got it. So I was thinking of what I remember about leading art lab and um, doing it. Well, I remember her bringing a lot of different stencils and things. Um, and I remember her teaching us the card trick, spreading the paint with credit card. Um, I did, I learned a lot from her as far as techniques um, that I hadn't even tried. Um, but I just felt so, um, what do you call it? Unqualified, I guess, to be following in Jenny's footsteps. And I realize that no matter what I do, it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. And we are always going to remember Jenny. There's just no other Jenny. And there's never gonna be anyone like Jenny. And I miss her and I, I can't be her. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna bring a little bit different twist. I know that, um, but I'm really excited about doing it again, this time in April. What I remember from last year is I was so busy. I didn't have time to sit down and really do any art myself. I was mostly answering questions and um, showing different techniques and admiring people's work. That was my favorite part. My absolute favorite part was going around and seeing what everyone was doing. It was just such a beautiful encapsulation of 
that moment in all of our lives where we coincided and made something that was meaningful to us about our lives and we learned something together and we connected in a way I feel like only art can do. <laughs> it's yeah. That's art lab for you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. What would you say to people who um, are like, I'm not artistic um, or I, you know, I don't, I'm not an artist. You I'm say not you're artist. deluding yourself because you're a human <laughs> and therefore somewhere in there, it may be really deep, but I would challenge them to, to give it a shot. Just see what's in there. If you haven't ever done that and think that you can't, there is no time like now to try. You never know what you're going to um, discover about yourself, about the people next to you. You might just leave inspired, if for no other reason than to look around and, and note beauty and have a further conversation some other time down the road. Yeah. Well, and I think some of it might be also just like us pushing ourselves to kind of have courage to overcome those inner critics you know, because yes. my mom is a, a is an artist and my parents are both photographers and they met at a photography club. And and so as far as like um, painting and drawing and that, I've always had this like high criticism of myself because I have this standard you know, of this person I grew up with. And, mm -hmm. you know, for me to like, but I do enjoy like sketching and painting and creating even, but I, I, there's this wrestle in me of like, it has to be a certain thing. It has to look amazing or has to look beautiful and I think like one of the things that doing an art lab with Jenny for me was was it's just continuing to challenge that like it it's it's about the process it's not about the outcome and like that entering into that process in community that art process in community is healing and it and it quiets those voices down if we just practice it like we quiet those voices down that are like so hypercritical at least inside of me and that's that's a, a practice I want to implement again um is doing just more of that just to just to do it because it it does connect to something inside of me and to my community and to this wider beauty in the world um but how do you how do you think what what helps people get over that or get get there get to the art lab which I yeah, did you want to talk about what's happening on or what we started Amy, re Amy Joe referred to it briefly, but the, the Palm Sunday thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that last year, you know, in honor of um, Jenny, it was two weeks or two months after she had died. And for Palm Sunday, um, we did uh, the, fir the first Jenny Herrick Memorial Art Lab and it 70 people came. It was crazy. I mean, they were like, people it came. Was all ages and Amy Jo led that. And I love what, and so we're going to do it again. That, that now is part of Palm Sunday. Some of our evolution as a community is just shifting what we used to do. And we're kind of coming out of COVID and now it just felt so important to have a community wide event, not just a smaller workshop with a smaller amount of people, but to give people the opportunity. And I love what you said, Amy Jo, about seeing you're you, you're not Jenny. Yeah. It's not to model Jenny. It's to mm -hmm. actually just extend the creation space for all people at the refuge and watching those kids make stuff and watching people mm -hmm. engage was about liberation and just like what, you know, what do you want to be free of or what's a statement about yourself or whatever. Everyone did all different things. It was magical. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, that's the art lab part. So you come back and, and, you know, that piece about what do you tell people? Like, how do you keep, you know, giving people the chance to try. Yeah. I would say you're qualified to come try just because you exist <laughs> and yeah. is life, whether you realize it or not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think there's a quote from Beck Robbins that I liked uh, in terms of uh, art lab or just trying to recognize what it does. And it's uh, take time to express yourself creatively and emotionally. Write a poem, sketch, sing, journal what you're feeling and thinking. Expression is a top happiness booster. Your life is your greatest masterpiece. Give it the attention it deserves. Mm. That's beautiful. Uh, I just, I, and I also, I mean, I totally agree. I'm 
so excited for any I know the stuff you do <laughs> I look at and I'm amazed at and uh, I can't wait for your perspective to come out and just be there with community and being able to express ourselves in that way and it changes us as soon as we do stuff like that it changes us which of course just changes everybody around us then too it's just that's part of the need to have to you know the more moments we have of that the better the world is yeah. um, so true yeah well we're kind of coming to our close here but any final questions kathy or final reflections before we do our rapid fire well, I do just want to say something about Amy Jo and the art that she created for the Refuge Cafe. I, I appreciate it. That's why I love doing this because I remember the story and I forgot that that was you were doodling and then you made these papers for us and um, these wonderful coloring pages and they really, we all used them. We ran out. We didn't know we had the originals and when Jared, that's my son, most everybody connected to the refuge in some way know the story that when he died in 2019, he was an artist. He was a wild, beautiful soul who made all kinds of beautiful things um, just naturally. And um, in honor of his one year anniversary, we asked Amy Jo if she would take some of the quotes that Jared said. It's going to make me cry, but it's so beautiful and it's this legacy of art and so she made a coloring book of I think it was 15 different sayings that Jared said and made adult coloring book and kid coloring book pages I mean and it is literally Amy Jo a masterpiece <laughs> it's you. a masterpiece and for it was us, an honor to make mm. labor of love just loved doing it loved Jared loved just being able to be part of spreading his legacy mm. and when I love thank you because it's like been so healing for us and it's how people create like they send they send me the things that they make you know and the things that it inspires and so you know art in community is everything that's my thing and sitting here in the circle with you all and just thinking about the things we've made and experienced and done together. And then the things that we're gonna make yeah. and experience and do together this year and in the years to come, it's just like fills my soul with joy and healing. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of that quote you were going to share, Amy Jo. What was it again? The um, By Gerard or Gerhard, Gerhard Richter. <laughs> and I, I probably totally butchered that. But um, the quote is, art is the highest form of hope. Mm -hmm. And when I think of the refuge, I think of hope. Mm -hmm. And I think that fits. We have to have art at the refuge. Yeah. Thank you. All right, here we go. Are we ready? <laughs> no need to feel nervous no need these are easy 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 oh All right. the questions i'm like why are we nervous oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, rapid fire here we go what is one word one word that best describes the refuge to you a source of of people who truly um communicate in ways that i find is a total gift i love that one word see now i'm not going to obey the one word rule then that's okay. oh i didn't obey that did i it's all right we're this not is the rabbit edge. everyone's it's... always <laughs> it's not one word that describes the refuge <laughs> i don't think i've ever heard that word there ever so you're good <laughs> okay um i would say the first one that does come to mind is family mm. and that's because of what the refuge has meant to me as i went through all those crises um starting in 2013 but 2014 hooked me up with the refuge and i think i'm alive today because of that mm. um, um okay finish this sentence i keep connecting with the refuge community because because of the people mm. yes because of the people <laughs> the family <laughs> people i don't want to say anything else <laughs> um the most, one of the most irritating parts of the refuge is 
let's be honest. <laughs> uh, technology and time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I have any big sources of irritation. I think maybe Sunday nights might be hard for me just because it feels more, it's in a different, um, it's on a different plane than I feel like I am right now, mm, spiritually. Yeah. And that's, that's the only thing. I just love the rap here. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Okay. Last one. Being part of the refuge has helped me mm. heal. Mm. Hope. Yeah. Yeah. Um, healing. Mm. Healing and growth. Mm. For sure. Mm. Love it. It's awesome. Well, our closing round, I'm leaving today, leaving this time together with a little more or a little less. And I can start. I'm leaving with uh, gratitude for our friend and for each of you and for um, for beauty. Mm. I think I'm leaving with a sense of wanting to go create art <laughs> again and looking forward to that space to make it uh, and gratitude for uh, all the the community we have that gives that that allows us to have this gift of beauty and art and meditation and contemplative thought mm. Mm. Love it. i'm feeling reminded of how very lucky i am to have you people in my life and to be at a place like the refuge that encourages and feeds that part of me because it's pretty much all of me <laughs> uh i'm leaving with a little more um like make space for this mm -hmm. make space for this and that's this was a great conversation for me today it helps me thank you so grateful to get to do it together <laughs>